All right, welcome to MI40 University. I'm Dr. Jacob Wilson, and today I'm gonna to be talking about a real popular supplement, which is beta alanine. So everyone takes it, right? You take it, you sort of get a tingling sensation, but what does it actually do? We know it works, but what does it actually do? Well, here's what happens. When you're lifting weights, right, what stops you from completing a repetition, right? What stops you? Well, a lot of it is basically you're building up what are called hydrogen ions, or acidity in the muscle. And as that acidity builds up, it stops our ability to continue to move. So instead of getting maybe 12 reps, we might get nine, we fall short. Well, it turns out that inside of our muscles, we have buffers. And one of those buffers is called carnosine. Okay, and carnosine is a buffer. Basically, it soaks up hydrogen ions, kind of like a sponge soaks up water. Well, what does that mean with beta alanine? Well, guess what the major building block to this buffer carnosine is? That major building block is actually beta alanine. And when you supplement with beta alanine, it goes to the muscle, you produce carnosine, and now you have more buffering capacity. All right, so how much do you need to take? Well, basically, the more the better. The problem is when you take it, you get a lot of tingling sensation. You get sort of a neural uh, stimulus that's called paresthesia. So we're limited. We can only take about one gram per time when we're taking uh, beta alanine. So Basically, you want to take one gram as many times as three to seven times a day, spread throughout the day, every two to three uh, hours. Now, for if you're going to see effect on beta alanine, you're like, oh, I took beta alanine, it worked great, I took a pre-workout, greatest still in my life, it doesn't work that way. It takes time to build up in your muscle, and so beta alanine essentially is going to take essentially um, 30 days before it actually works. So let me, let me point out as far as what beta alanine actually does, it's going to help with um, with strength endurance, but not necessarily like powerlifting, because powerlifting is not going to be limited by that buffering system. All right, so who should use beta alanine? Well, remember, beta alanine is not going to be used like on explosive movements, because it's it's limiting you more in like a higher repetition range or an aerobic range when we start building up hydrogen ions. So that's going to be really any type of lifting or activity that lasts more than 30 seconds, right? So it's gonna be eight to 12 reps, it's gonna be supersets, it's gonna be giant sets. Or if you're an aerobic athlete, basically when you do like an intense hill, when you start climbing that hill, that's when beta alanine will work because it'll buffer things, right? Or HIIT training, for example, if you're actually doing interval training or wind gates or sprinting, now we're gonna build up a lot of hydrogen ions and that's when the beta alanine will help soak up those hydrogen ions by a carnosine. So that's who should actually use it as far as Fat loss, well, beta alanine is not going to directly affect fat loss, but if you can get greater training volume, on the other hand, more training volume might lead to more calories expended, which could lead to fat loss, but it's not a direct fat loss agent. 